I bought this untested lot of 30 pounds of digital cameras for $300 at an online auction. I only know what four of the camera models actually are because there was only one picture and the picture quality was quite poor. Now I don't normally gamble, but gotta stick around to see if this is a bust or if this is gonna be a jackpot. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tally the projected values of the cameras, assuming they're working. And we'll see if we hit my target of around $750 of projected value from this box. All right, let's jump right into it and open this box and see what we got inside. Oh, bubble wrap, that's always a good sign. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, oops, I already see some. Oh, they're just kind of piled in there. That's not really packaged very well. But there is a lot of cameras in there. Looks like Canon and Nikon mostly. Well, welcome back to another video, uh, an unboxing of digital cameras. Uh, as I said, often said, this is one of my favorite parts of the job. And uh, I went ahead and put the box down here under the table because there's not enough room for it up here. And let's pull out the first camera. And in this case, we've got a Canon EOS 40D DSLR camera. And this is a camera that was kind of built like a tank. It uses the smaller APS-C size sensor. Um, but even after the original release of this camera, gosh, it's probably been 16, 17 years now, it still takes good pictures. I think it's 8 megapixels, 8 or 10. It uses the Canon BP511 battery. Now I don't have a lens right now, but I'm gonna grab one real quick. I saw a couple inside the box so we can test and make sure autofocus is working. And then uh, most of these cameras will have a built-in flash, so we'll test that as well. And then we'll ascertain a value and hopefully see how, how far we can get above that $300 initial buy price. Oh, and I've got uh, batteries here uh, for a lot of these cameras. A lot of Canon cameras, there's only like four or five DSLR camera batteries that were used for a period of 10 or 15 years. So I have all of those batteries and then I have some Nikons as well. I happen to have the BP511 battery here, which is what goes with this camera. So I'll go ahead and uh, slide it in there. And if you guys have any of these cameras, uh, leave a comment down below. Love to know your feedback. Uh, I've shot with almost every DSLR camera that's a budget anyway that was made from 2004 through 2017. And let's see if it turns on. We'll be able to tell with that menu up there, so I'll go ahead and flick it on. Yeah, shows a little bit of charge left on it anyway. And normally I'll set it to auto just to make sure that all the functions are working correctly. So let me grab a lens real quick. Okay. All right, so compact flash card looks like this. And I'll go ahead and slide it in there. One of the things that you'll see occasionally is that the compact flash pin, uh, one of them may be bent. And that can cause the compact flash card to not seat in there properly and record. In this case, it looks good. So we'll pop it in there. Let me format the card real quick. It says check the connection between the lens and the body. Okay, I just grabbed one of my lenses just to test. And it's a Canon 10 to 18 millimeter. We'll put it on there. Communication between the camera and lens is faulty. Clean the lens contacts. Well, this lens is perfectly fine. Use it all the time. So what can happen there sometimes is the contact metal ring can have some residue on it. And then sometimes the little uh, round uh, electrical contact points can also have some debris on it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just cleaning that real quick. I'm gonna try to see if I can fix this camera um, that's not an error that you see that often. So no value on that one, unfortunately. If this was in good working condition, the value on this camera is in the $70, $75 range with the charger. Dang. It does power on though, so there is some hope. 
Okay, next one. The big brother of the EOS 40D, the 50D. And again, built pretty well. Uh, certainly a larger body than like the Canon Rebel XT, XS, uh, T1i, T2i, that I'm sure we'll have some models to look at later. This uses the same battery actually, the BP511. So I'll go ahead and pop that in. And it also uses compact flash for memory. So I have a card here, go ahead and put it in. Shutter button doesn't work. Stream got stuck. Hmm. Menu button doesn't work. Menu button doesn't do anything when you push it. And it should pop up the menu. So we've got nothing doing there. The top screen works, the shutter button doesn't actually work or take pictures. So I'll have to see if I can get that one working. Um, if this was in good working condition, the value on this camera would be about 100 bucks. So that's really a bummer that it's not working. There is still some value for these cameras if I can't get them working, if they do power on. You can sell them in the four part section on a site like eBay, and then people that can actually salvage or repair them or take the camera's parts uh, and use them for other cameras will do that. So. I won't assign a value on that one for now, unfortunately. Geeks, 0 for 2 start. 0 for 2 start. Let's uh, try something a little different. Let's try something a little different. Got a Canon Rebel XT here. Oh no, Rebel XTi, slightly newer version of the Rebel XT. And this is a kind of a budget price point, uh, I believe 8 megapixel DSLR camera that Canon released around 2006. 2008, I believe. And this camera when it was released actually cost like $7.99 or $8.99, so not cheap for back in the day. Um, I've sold hundreds of this camera over the last 10 years, and it's quite a bit smaller than the 40D and 50D that we were looking at previously. And uh, I found that these are also workhorses, and oftentimes will still work even in 2024. Let's pull a memory card, and this camera uses the Canon NB2L battery, and I have one of those right here. Saw red light flash on, so that's good. You can see the LCD also popped on. So I've set it to an auto mode, and we will go ahead and try to take a picture here. Flash pops up. Make sure it focuses. There's a little bit of dust visible through the viewfinder that's common with age. I don't see any haze or anything else that would actually affect the picture quality, but that is something that I would mention if I were to sell this camera. So this camera body alone, the value on this camera is going to be about 50. So finally making a, making a dent in that $300 purchase price, but hopefully there's uh, some better models than this, unless all the other models work 100%. So one for three so far. Put that down here. Let's try this. What do we got here? Oh, Nikon D5000. Cool. Sell this camera quite a bit. At least in a similar time. Very one of the first variable hinges that was on the market for more budget DSLR cameras. So it was nice if you're shooting up high, you could actually shoot like this and then uh, look at the screen if you needed to. This uses Nikon's ENL9 battery, and I've got, I believe, some of those over here. I right, saw a green light pop on. Let's throw a memory card in there. This uses just regular SD card. We'll put that memory card in. Oh, there already is one. Oh, it's got a 64 gig memory card. How about that? It's a pretty, pretty good sized memory card there for this old camera. Sometimes newer model uh, SDXC cards in larger sizes won't work with older DSLR cameras like this. Go ahead and format the memory real quick. 
Lens moves in and out good. Let's uh, try taking a quick picture. Flash pops up. We're in auto mode. Looks good. Yep. Okay. Everything's working fine on this. So the last thing I would do if I were to sell a camera like this that makes it a lot easier for the buyer is actually take the memory card out once it has the picture on it and you can put it in your computer and go to a couple different websites like cameraShutterCount.com. You can find out how many shutter actuations the D5000 has by uh, just doing that simple thing. And most websites are free. There's some paid ones as well. Um, but I believe that this body has a shutter estimate of around 100,000. So if this only had 20 or 25,000, then the value would be better than if it had 80 or 100,000. And the shutter was almost at the end of its life. So value on the D5000 with the lens, and if I put a charger with it with the memory card, you're looking at a value of about $125 on this. Again, interchangeable lenses. Uh, this camera doesn't have a built-in motor, so it needs to have an AFS lens that supports um, autofocus within the lens itself. It's the only kind of drawback to this. It'll work with other lenses that are Nikon F-mount, but it just won't autofocus. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, Canon EOS D60. This is an old one. Uh, one of my first unboxing videos had this camera in it this very camera, and this camera was released I think in 2002. I believe it's a 4 or 6 megapixel camera and also uses the BP511 battery. But when this was released it was $1,000. Ooh, it has a compact flash card in it. 340 megabytes! Holy megabytes, Batman! Probably hold quite a few pictures in here actually if it's only 4 or 6 megapixels. Let's uh, pop a battery in there and give it, give it the old test -a -roo. Kind of confusing because Canon makes the EOS 60D, but this is the Canon EOS D60. 60D is a much newer camera model than the, the D60. So this actually shoots in RAW as well, um, if you wanted to. Uh, it's got this cool early generation Canon uh, menu, and you can control it with the toggle wheel here. It does power on, which is a, a good sign. Going to pair it with one of my favorite lenses of all time. The Canon 24 to 105 millimeter L lens. Probably overkill, but mounts on there good. So I am going to go ahead and try to take a picture here. Ooh, focuses. Flash pops up. Yeah. Wow, would you look at that. <laughs> does take a while, of course, uh, to write to the actual card, so it's still showing as busy. There we go. There's the picture we just took on that giant, massive screen. Whoop. So, looks to be in... Uh, Good working condition for its age. It is missing the USB port cover here, so that would affect the value a little bit. But I've actually sold this model in the last few months, just the body alone. Um, the value with the body is going to be right around $65 on this camera. All right, moving on to the next camera, camera number five. We've got another Nikon, Nikon D5200 body. No lens cap, so there could be some dust that made its way in there. So that's unfortunate you're a little bit at the whim of whoever is selling you the cameras. Um, this is not something I would recommend to storing a camera without either a lens on or the body cap. But it is what it is. And this camera's probably just been sitting somewhere for many years. So I'm looking at a light now to see if there's dust or if there's scratches on the focus screen. The fo focus screen is what's visible when you actually look through the viewfinder. This camera does have live view mode, so you can either look through the viewfinder or use live view to take a picture. Um, it uses the Nikon ENL14 battery, which is this guy here. Let's see if it's got any charge. Oh, it does power on. Okay, let's uh, get, a, get that same lens that we know works off of this body here. And then uh, we can give it, give it a try. Put a memory card into Oh, it has a memory card. 8 gig. Nice. Takes a picture, flash fires. That looks pretty good, actually. So let me take the lens off since we know the 
autofocus is working. And this camera has gone up in value a little bit over the last few years. Um, the body alone, you're looking at, at a low shutter count, probably in the $200 range. Um, and it is in good shape. But you can take this uh, memory card out and take it to that same, same one of those same websites I was mentioning earlier about shutter count. And it'll give you an idea, a pretty accurate idea of what the shutter count is of the camera. Fix that real quick. But based on the physical condition, I would think that this shutter count would be quite low. So that helps the value as well, as well as gives the pr prospective buyer some additional information on how much the camera was actually used. Oh, Canon EOS Rebel T2i. This is a DSLR camera. Uses an APS-C size sensor. Basically went from the XSI to the T1i to the T2i. I think this camera was released probably somewhere around 2011, 2012. I believe it's an 18 megapixel sensor size. Uses the LPE8 battery. There is one in here, but it's dead. Got a charge one over here. Let's uh, turn it on and see if it works. Power's on. And let me go to the menu. And format the card. We could use either lens. Let's try this 10 to 18 and power it on. And just gonna check if autofocus works in the flash fires. I have it in the green square, which is auto mode. Let's put it in a darker situation here. Here we go. Flash fires. I don't see any dust through the viewfinder either, which is pretty uncommon. Um, value on this camera uh, for the body only is going to be right around $115 in good shape like this one is. Doesn't appear to be used a whole lot, but I always, again, if you have a, a Canon body cap or a replacement body cap, highly recommend storing your cameras with a body cap. And when I sell them, if I have it, I will always include it. It protects it during transit and from dust getting in there. Or if you live in a humid climate, you can get have other issues that can affect the camera optically. All right, what do we got here? Canon US 30D, wow. So we had the 40D, the 50D. This is the earlier generation camera, the third, the 30D, and also uses that same battery, the BP511, and compact flash memory. You know we have that. Turn it on. Power's on. Turn it off real quick. With these older cameras, I'd like to have it off whenever I put the memory card in. Sometimes you can have some problems when you put the card in while the camera's on. And format looks good. Let's try, well, let's do the 10 to 18 again. Why not? Flash pops up. Let's see if it fires. Yep. Oh, it looks good. So this camera is in decent physical condition. Value on this isn't huge. Um, it's kind of in between the 20D and the 40D value wise. You're looking at about probably in the $55 range for this US 30D. Pretty good value for a budget or beginner DSLR camera, I would say. And with that camera, we hit uh, over $600 in projected value from this lot so far. And we've still got about half the cameras left. So we are moving in the right direction here. Canon Rebel XSI, this is the one I was talking about earlier. It came after the Canon Rebel XS and was shortly before the Canon Rebel T1i. And I believe this is an 8 or 10 megapixel sensor, APS-C sized. Um, looks decent. This isn't the same kit lens that it came with. This is from an earlier Canon Rebel XT model. Maybe one of the models that we looked at before. But this uses the Canon LPE5 battery. This battery is dead. So I happen to have a charge one for this. Okay, the camera does turn on. And let's see if it takes a picture. Put a memory card in there real quick. 
Again, I try to use small memory cards if I can, because if these often don't accept the larger size. Autofocus works. Flash pops up. Flash fires. And there's a little bit of tape residue on the side. I'll get that cleaned up with some Matzenbrockers uh, liftoff, which is pretty good stuff that get, gets some of the tacky, sticky residue off of cameras whenever I'm testing them. Value on this camera is not super high. Um, it's going to be right around $90 with the lens and with the charger. Um, but kind of came along for the ride, and, uh, and any camera that works is a camera that we're saving from the trash bin. All right, next camera. Ooh, Nikon D60. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, this was released in the same era as the Rebel XT, probably in that 2006, 2007, 2008 time frame. And I believe this is an 8 megapixel camera, maybe 10. And, uh, ooh, it has memory card, 2 gig memory card. Uses the Nikon ENL9 battery, which is the same battery that the D5000 uses. Uh, let's actually just see if there's any charge on this. Oh, there is. Wow. Very rarely do you have a camera battery with charge in it, uh, especially if it's been sitting for a while. So maybe somebody used this recently. So power's on. And let's see if we can uh, go ahead and take a picture. Takes a picture. Flash didn't fire, but let's see if we can get the flash to fire. Okay, interesting. So this is having an issue with the flash. You can tell that it keeps trying to click and open the flash, but then the flash doesn't actually fire in any mode. I just tested it in multiple modes. The camera does work. I do have some external flashes that you can actually hook up to the hot shoe here. And normally you can get the camera's flash into working condition by doing that. So I will hook this up with an external flash and we'll get a memory, we'll get a shutter count reading from the camera. This camera, uh, even with the flash issue, if we pair it with a working, uh, a working hot shoe flash, you're looking at a value of around a hundred bucks, actually, if the shutter count is low enough. And I believe these are rated to 70 to 100,000 shutter actuations, the D60. All right, and with that camera, we just hit $800 in projected value from the original purchase price. So that's great. This is looking to be a really nice box. And we still got a few cameras left. Let's see how many we got. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four. Four cameras left in this box. Ooh, another, another EOS 50D. You know, normally I don't experience tons of 50Ds in lots. So it's kind of cool. Unfortunately, we've had some issues with a few of these older Canon DSLR cameras in our testing today. Uses the BP511 battery. Maybe this one will work. Does power on. The display does work. All right, we're gonna try third compact flash card that I know is working. And if that doesn't work, then we've got some sort of compact flash card reader problem. Card format, see that's what it's been showing me. Card formatted. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. My menu though. There we go. Format. Okay. Cannot format change card. So I've tried three different compact flash cards that have worked in generations of Canon DSLR cameras like this. So unfortunately I'm not going to be able to assign a value to this camera either, uh, but in good working condition the value on this is about a hundred bucks. Boy, I'm kind of striking out with these big Canon DSLR cameras. Striking out. Might as well do another one. Canon US 20D. Earlier version of the 30D. So compact flash. Let's throw one in. And we can use that same battery we were just using. Power's on. It does read the card this time. Same exact card we had in the 50D. Format it. Let's try the big lens for good luck. Yeah? Cool. 
it is working. Autofocus is working. And it's in decent shape. Let's see if the USB cover, side cover, is uh, going to flake off and break on me. No, that, that looks good as well. A little bit tacky. It's pretty common. Okay. So we've got a, finally got a working, older, uh, large-bodied Canon DSLR camera. But unfortunately, the value on the EOS 20D is pretty low. You're looking at about 40 bucks on this camera. And a couple things here. We've got a Canon and a Nikon lens. Okay, uh, those obviously won't go together, but uh, this is a regular Nikon 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And value on this, assuming autofocus is working, is about 40 bucks. And you can always pair it with a, can a Nikon body and just sell it as a kit for someone that's just starting out. It's a good option. So $40 there. And the body is a Canon Rebel XTI, another XTI. Uh, I believe this is either 8 or 10 megapixels. Also reports to compact flash memory. It has a card in there. 8 gig, wow. And the cards have a little bit of value themselves, especially if they're larger sizes. Like an 8 gig card is going to have a value of like 5 to 7. Um, but if I can help it, I do try to include compact flash cards within the lots, within the cameras that I sell. Just so whenever the customer gets it, they have something that's actually working out of the box. Formatting the card takes a little bit longer and older DSLR cameras like this. Yeah, flash fires. Autofocus appears to be working. Let's do one more test. Yeah. Okay, format. So body on this, uh, not a ton of value. Uh, there's just a sticker on top I can get rid of real quick. And then I can use some of that Gooby Gone stuff that I use to, to get that sticker residue off there. And once I do that, the value on this is going to be about $55 for the body. All right, with that camera, we just went over $900 in projected value. I think technically it's around $935. And we've got one camera left. I wonder if we can get to a thousand. That would be a killer box. That would take that to a jackpot box, I would say. Even with those broken cameras. We've got a Canon Rebel XSI with the battery grip. And this is a DSLR camera that was made in between the Rebel XS and the Rebel T1i, somewhere in the 2008 to 2010 time frame, I believe. Um, let's go ahead and see if it's got any, it's got two LPE5 batteries and probably original, so these are pretty old. A lot of times these will still work. I know there's limited life in lithium ion batteries, but if they're not swollen, which these aren't, a lot of them will be, um, they may still hold at least a little bit of charge. Uh, but I've got a charge battery here I'll throw in. I'll, most of the time you can use just a single battery in these battery grips, as long as it's charged. And it has a little bit of life, so it does power on. And it uses a SD card, which has got one in there. Sensor. Let's see, viewfinder looks good. A little bit of dust through the viewfinder. I'm going to go ahead and throw on the big lens. The final test, the final body that we're doing. It is working. And this working with the grip, the grip has a little bit of wear as well. Um, you're looking at a value of right in that $75 range. So this will get us to uh, our target and actually over it and make this buy kind of a jackpot. We're a little over $1,000 on the original $300 investment. So I should at least uh, double my money before all of the fees involved with selling it and of course my time. So I'm not making thousands of dollars on this deal, but I'm making a few hundred and for me that's worth it. I don't get an opportunity to do a ton of DSLR camera lots, so that was really fun. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've used any of these cameras before and what other videos you would like to see. Thanks as always. Kevin from Prickly Pear Camera out.